So I only have four more slides. And I told Jeff that I forgot my watch, so I don't really know how far I'm going, but I am almost done. And I don't see many people asleep yet, so I'm either going really fast or you're interested in this. But these last four slides might ruin the whole thing. <laughs> so I, I, I want, I, I'm getting a lot of phone calls, mostly from technical uh, uh, folks, technical service folks from different companies about two of our manuscripts. One that was just published a few months ago and one was published in 2014. And, and I want to walk you through these four or five slides and explain to you the, the results that we're seeing. I think it's really exciting. It's something that the swine and poultry people have known for years. So it shouldn't be too surprising that beef cattle respond the same way. But uh, uh, I wanted to put it together for you tonight because you are all experts in, in the health-related field. So I just showed you this slide. If we use an intervention called limit creep feeding, if we use this intervention, I hope I convinced you that you can wean calves that are of optimal trace mineral status compared to calves that don't consume mineral fortified limit creep feed. Here's the results, it works. But when those calves undergo a stress and you can't avoid it, an unavoidable stress of weaning, you can't see these here, but I just want to show you the top bar is the mineral fed calves, the bottom bar is control, top bar mineral. They undergo a greater inflammatory response to normal weaning stress. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this, this immune responsiveness, this immune reactivity is greater. Now, we've ran studies on these same calves to show that they have greater humoral immune responsiveness. They produce greater antibody titers to uh, immunogen challenge. So they have, they're very responsive. But that doesn't come free. There is an energy and nutrient cost that comes with it. And so when we optimize the ability of our calves to respond to stress, it has a cost. And that cost results in less body weight gain over a short period of time. Now, people then say, well, why on earth would I want to optimize trace mineral status if my calves are going to gain less body weight after weaning? But folks, this is only in a two-week period after weaning. We're only measuring this in 14, 15, 16 days. But we can pick up a small difference in calves that received trace mineral fortification in their, in their feed. These calves had better trace mineral status at weaning, and these calves were trace mineral deficient or marginally deficient. The marginally deficient animals had better body weight gain because they didn't undergo that inflammatory uh, 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 condition. They didn't undergo that heightened immune responsiveness. All right? This has nothing to do with limit creep feeding. Uh, about two years ago, I spoke to this group and I talked to you about this acute phase protein response and how it can be linked to trace mineral status. And this is the 2014 paper <clears throat> where we were looking at injectable trace minerals. When we give those injectable trace minerals to calves prior to weaning, yes, we can increase copper, manganese, selenium, and zinc, or, or copper, selenium, and zinc in those calves greater than the control calves. That happens. And just like the orally consumed minerals, they have a heightened immune responsiveness, just like we see here injectable trace mineral calves compared to saline control. And what happens? They gain less body weight in that short period of time. And so this is kind of exciting, and we, we, we've known this in the swine industry and the poultry industry. They manage their vaccination schedules because they know that that increase in the inflammatory response to vaccine will decrease feed efficiency and body weight gain in a short period of time. But I don't believe that the trade-off for less immune responsiveness is really worth the cost of this short-term body weight gain. Now, we have never followed these calves past that 14-day period. The calves we wean today, we are carrying out to 30 days. My anticipation is you won't see anything. I think the, the, the body weight gain will be exactly the same in those calves when they reach that period of time. But I think it's interesting that, that we come up with a system that works, we optimize trace mineral status of the wean calf, those calves have heightened immune responsiveness that can be measured in improved humoral immune responses and also witness a small, slight decrease in average daily gain. So 
just to conclude what we talked about in this presentation, that, that calf trace mineral status goes down from birth till weaning. That calves are born with adequate trace minerals almost always, sometimes with the exception of selenium. But over time, because milk is such a poor source of trace minerals, forages are often limiting, and calves don't consume adequate amounts of free choice salt mineral. They're weaned in marginal or deficient status. Calves have this aversion to mineral concentrated supplements. They have an aversion to it, and they don't like to consume it. And that they, they display a very clear preference for consumption of mineral concentrated supplements formulated with these hydroxychloride forms of, of copper, zinc, and manganese versus sulfate or organic forms. We believe it's because of the lesser solubility of those elements in the mouth when those animals are consuming it. These salt-based free choice supplements are vulnerable to precipitation loss, and in some cases it can be very significant, particularly when we compare them to some of the organic sources and all of the sulfate sources of those elements. And then this other area that I con concluded with, that, that we found ways to optimize and improve trace mineral status of calves, and it does translate to improved or heightened immune responsiveness, but it has a, a, a cost. It has an energy and nutrient cost that we're able to measure in, uh, in, in small reductions in body weight gain. So with that, I enjoyed visiting with you. I really enjoyed sharing these data with you. And um, this is my contact information, uh, but you can always uh, Google me at UF and get my email address. But everyone's always welcome to email me with questions on trace minerals. I really enjoy that be very happy to uh, engage you with any questions that you might have. And if we have time, I'd be happy to answer questions tonight as well. Thank you.